Why is it that puffer jackets keep you so warm in the winter? Well, it's all to do with the insulation. How would you know the best material to use? Let's find out how we go about doing that. So for this practical, um, there's a couple of things you could use as your independent variable. One of them is the insulating material, but you have to read the question carefully to figure out if it's the material or if it's the number of layers. And if it is material, what exact materials are you using? So for an example, I've got um, four beakers here. And we're gonna wrap one of them in cardboard, one of them in bubble wrap. I'm gonna wrap one of them in sand which sounds weird but i'll talk about it later and i'm going to wrap one in cotton wool you could also have one without any insulation as well the dependent variable is going to be the same regardless of the material what you're measuring is the temperature decrease control variables in this case would be the same volume of water we are going to put in each beaker we're going to use if we're using the same thickness of material that means it's a different material each time um, and we're going to have the same starting temperature so like i said we're going to fill them all with water from a kettle and um, nice hot water make sure it's hot enough to start with to allow us to figure out how much it decreases by so for the method itself um, what we're going to do is wrap the same thickness of material or different materials around let's say four beakers if there are six beakers in the question then you talk about six if there are eight you talk about eight um, but it's a really good idea to get your control variables into your method so you don't forget to write them down later once you've got them all set up, and that's important to do that first, you're going to pour in boiling water from a kettle or a, a boiled kettle, um, and it's going to be, again, the same volume for each beaker. So how would you know that? Well, the beaker will have markings on it, so you can determine whether it's the same volume or not. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to measure the initial or the temperature at the start. So the initial temperature for each beaker, and we're going to say what we're going to use. We're going to use a thermometer. Now you can do one after the other, but all at the same time makes your life easier, less to uh, mention in your method. Then um, you're going to use a stopwatch or a stop clock um, and you're going to start it and then you're going to time the experiment and you're going to record the temperature every, let's say, two minutes. It could be 30 seconds, it could be five minutes, depends on what the question asks you. Now, how do you go about knowing which material is the best insulator? You could be asked to plot a bar graph or be given a bar graph um, to determine which one is the best, um, or it could be a line graph. So for a bar graph, and sorry for the shoddy drawing on this, um, they would give you, let's say, the four materials um, with, on the x-axis and on the y-axis might be the temperature decrease. So in this case, the material that has the highest temperature decrease is the worst insulator. Another graph they could give you, which is a little bit trickier, is a line graph, and each material would have, be a separate line. So it'd be a bit meaner to give you four of these, but they could do. Um, so let's say one has a very low temperature decrease over time, one has a bit higher, one has somewhere in the middle, and one has quite a high temperature decrease over time. And actually, one of them you can see here, the red one would be the worst <coughs> insulator uh, because it has the highest temperature decrease over the period you're measuring for. It actually goes down all the way to room temperature. Blue in this case would be the best insulator um, because of having, instead of having the highest temperature decrease, it decreases by the lowest amount. Okay. And uh, now room temperature, um, if they do ever stop decreasing, it'll stop at about 20 degrees because that's the temperature rooms are commonly at. Now, uh, for a bar chart, like I said, the worst insulator would be the highest bar, um, and the best insulator would be the lowest bar, which I know is different colours here, but I'm just doing it to show you what's there. Now, it's really careful you read the question carefully because there could be variants here. Instead of doing different materials, they could give you one material in a question, and you're asked to change the thickness of the cardboard. So instead of having four different materials, it would say something like, oh, two layers of cardboard, four layers of cardboard, six, eight, 20, 100, doesn't matter. You've got to be able to look at the question and figure out how to adapt your method. So for the graph, it'd be slightly different. You'd have a bar chart of your two, four, six different layers. Um, but look how much the method is the same. Uh, there's one major change, which is instead of wrapping the beakers in different materials, you'd say wrap the beakers in different numbers of layers of cardboard. So you'd say two, four, six, eight, be specific as you can. Now, the only thing that changes apart from that is just that method one, okay? Now, you'd have a different graph, but it would be very, very, very similar in your conclusions. Safety with this practical, please don't say things like don't touch the water. Uh, you don't need to touch the water, it's not on your method, but to make sure you don't spill it, we use things like a funnel to pour the boiling water, or you could say keep beakers in the center of the table to make sure you're preventing any uh, burns and breakages, things like that. If you're pouring the hot water, you could also say use goggles, um, but that wouldn't be the major risk in this practical, I don't think. 
Now, because this practical is relatively straightforward, there's only like three or four steps, um, they'd love to ask you about different errors that might occur. So um, what, one thing that can reduce accuracy is if uh, heat is escaping from each beaker. So you say keep a lid on uh, to reduce heat escaping. That would mean more of the heat is being um, like uh, kept and distributed via the insulation. You could then say use the thermometer. Uh, when you use it, give it time to settle for each beaker. So maybe give it a few seconds to rise to where it's going to rise to rather than just doing it straight away. Um, there's also, when you're talking about thermometers, uh, always parallax error, which means you're not reading it at eye level. So ensure you read it perpendicular um, to the um, thermometer to make sure you get an accurate reading.